William Henry Beveridge, first Baron Beveridge, the 5th of March 1879 to the 16th of March 1963, was a British economist who was a noted progressive and social reformer. He is best known for his 1942 report Social Insurance and Allied Services, known as the Beveridge Report, which served as the basis for the post-World War II welfare state put in place by the Labour government elected in 1945. He was considered an authority on unemployment insurance from early in his career, served under Winston Churchill on the Board of Trade as director of the newly created labor exchanges and later as permanent secretary of the Ministry of Food. He was director of the London School of Economics and Political Science from 1919 until 1937, when he was elected Master of University College, Oxford. Beveridge published widely on unemployment and social security, his most notable works being, Unemployment, A Problem of Industry 1909, Planning under Socialism 1936, Full Employment in a Free Society 1944, Pillars of Security 1943, Power and Influence 1953, and A Defense of Free Learning 1959. Early life and education Beveridge, the eldest son of Henry Beveridge, an Indian civil service officer and district judge, and scholar Annette Aykroyd, was born in Rangpur, British India now Rangpur, Bangladesh, on 5 March 1879. Beveridge's mother had, with Elizabeth Mallison, founded the Working Women's College in Queen Square, London in 1864. She met and married Henry Beveridge in Calcutta where she had gone in 1873 to open a school for Indian girls. William Beveridge was educated at Charterhouse, a leading public school near the market town of Godalming in Surrey, followed by Balliol College at the University of Oxford, where he studied mathematics and classics, obtaining a first-class degree in both. He later studied law. While Beveridge's mother had been a member of the Storbridge Unitarian community, his father was an early humanist and positivist activist and an ardent disciple of the French philosopher Auguste Comte. Comte's ideas of a secular religion of humanity were a prominent influence in the household and would exert a lasting influence on Beveridge's thinking. Beveridge himself became a «materialist agnostic» in his words. <laughs> Life and career After leaving university, Beveridge initially became a lawyer. He became interested in the social services and wrote about the subject for the Morning Post newspaper. His interest in the causes of unemployment began in 1903 when he worked at Toynbee Hall, a settlement house in London. There he worked closely with Sidney Webb and Beatrice Webb and was influenced by their theories of social reform, becoming active in promoting old age pensions, free school meals, and campaigning for a national system of labour exchanges. In 1908, now considered to be Britain's leading authority on unemployment insurance, he was introduced by Beatrice Webb to Winston Churchill, who had recently been promoted to the Cabinet as President of the Board of Trade. Churchill invited Beveridge to join the Board of Trade, and he organized the implementation of the national system of labor exchanges and national insurance to combat unemployment and poverty. During the First World War he was involved in mobilizing and controlling manpower. After the war, he was knighted and made permanent secretary to the Ministry of Food. In 1919 he left the civil service to become director of the London School of Economics and Political Science. Over the next few years he served on several commissions and committees on social policy. He was so highly influenced by the Fabian Society Socialists, in particular by Beatrice Webb, with whom he worked on the 1909 Poor Laws Report, that he could be considered one of their number. He published academic economic works including his early work on unemployment 1909. The Fabians made him a director of the LSE in 1919, a post he retained until 1937. During his time as director, he jousted with Edwin Cannon and Lionel Robbins, who were trying to steer the LSE away from its Fabian roots. From 1929 he led the International Scientific Committee on Price History, contributing a large historical study, Prices and Wages in England from the 12th to the 19th century 1939. In 1933 he helped set up the Academic Assistance Council. This helped prominent academics who had been dismissed from their posts on grounds of race, religion or political position to escape Nazi persecution. In 1937, Beveridge was appointed Master of University College, Oxford. <laughs> <laughs> Wartime work 
Three years later, Ernest Bevin, Minister of Labor in the wartime national government, invited Beveridge to take charge of the welfare department of his ministry. Beveridge refused, but declared an interest in organizing British manpower in wartime Beveridge had come to favor a strong system of centralized planning. Bevin was reluctant to let Beveridge have his way but did commission him to work on a relatively unimportant manpower survey from June 1940 and so Beveridge became a temporary civil servant. Neither Bevin nor the permanent secretary of the ministry Sir Thomas Phillips liked working with Beveridge as both found him conceited. His work on manpower culminated in his chairmanship of the Committee on Skilled Men in the Services which reported to the War Cabinet in August and October 1941. Two recommendations of the committee were implemented, Army recruits were enlisted for their first six weeks into the General Service Corps, so that their subsequent posting could take account of their skills and the Army's needs, and the Corps of Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers was created. Report on social insurance An opportunity for Bevin to ease Beveridge out presented itself in May 1941 when Minister of Health Ernest Brown announced the formation of a committee of officials to survey existing social insurance and allied services, and to make recommendations. Although Brown had made the announcement, the inquiry had largely been urged by Minister without portfolio Arthur Greenwood, and Bevin suggested to Greenwood making Beveridge chairman of the committee. Beveridge, at first uninterested and seeing the committee as a distraction from his work on manpower, accepted only reluctantly. The report to the Parliament on Social Insurance and Allied Services was published in November 1942. It proposed that all people of working age should pay a weekly national insurance contribution. In return, benefits would be paid to people who were sick, unemployed, retired, or widowed. Beveridge argued that this system would provide a minimum standard of living below which no one should be allowed to fall." It recommended that the government should find ways of fighting the five giants on the road of reconstruction of want, disease, ignorance, squalor and idleness. Beveridge included as one of three fundamental assumptions the fact that there would be a national health service of some sort, a policy already being worked on in the Ministry of Health. Beveridge's arguments were widely accepted. He appealed to conservatives and other skeptics by arguing that welfare institutions would increase the competitiveness of British industry in the post-war period, not only by shifting labour costs like healthcare and pensions out of corporate ledgers and onto the public account but also by producing healthier, wealthier and thus more motivated and productive workers who would also serve as a great source of demand for British goods. Beveridge saw full employment defined as unemployment of no more than 3% as the pivot of the social welfare program he expressed in the 1942 report. Full employment in a free society, written in 1944 expressed how this goal might be gained. Alternative measures for achieving it included Keynesian-style fiscal regulation, direct control of manpower, and state control of the means of production. The impetus behind Beveridge's thinking was social justice, and the creation of an ideal new society after the war. He believed that the discovery of objective socio-economic laws could solve the problems of society. <laughs> Later career Later in 1944, Beveridge, who had recently joined the Liberal Party, was elected to the House of Commons in a by-election to succeed George Charles Grey, who had died on the battlefield in Normandy, France, on the first day of Operation Bluecoat on 30 July 1944. Beveridge briefly served as Member of Parliament MP for the constituency of Berwick-upon-Tweed, during which time he was prominent in the Radical Action Group, which called for the party to withdraw from the wartime electoral pact and adopt more radical policies. However, he lost his seat at the 1945 general election, when he was defeated by the Conservative candidate, Robert Thorpe, by a majority of 1,962 votes. The following year, the new Labour government began the process of implementing Beveridge's proposals that provided the basis of the modern welfare state. Clement Attlee and the Labour Party defeated Winston Churchill's Conservative Party at the 1945 general election. Attlee announced he would introduce the welfare state outlined in the 1942 Beveridge Report. This included the establishment of a national health service in 1948 with taxpayer-funded medical treatment for all. A national system of benefits was also introduced to provide social security so that the population would be protected from the cradle to the grave. 
The new system was partly built upon the national insurance scheme set up by Liberal Prime Minister, David Lloyd George in 1911. In 1946, Beveridge was elevated to the House of Lords as Baron Beveridge, of Tuggle in the county of Northumberland, and eventually became leader of the Liberal Party in the House of Lords. He was the author of Power and Influence 1953. He was the president of the Charity Attend then the National Association of Leagues of Hospital Friends from 1952 to 1962. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Eugenics. Beveridge was a member of the Eugenics Society, which promoted the study of methods to improve the human race by controlling reproduction. In 1909, he proposed that men who could not work should be supported by the state but with complete and permanent loss of all citizen rights, including not only the franchise but civil freedom and fatherhood." Whilst director of the London School of Economics, Beveridge attempted to create a department of social biology. Though never fully established, Lancelot Hogben, a fierce anti-eugenicist, was named its chair. Former LSE director John Ashworth speculated that discord between those in favor and those against the serious study of eugenics led to Beveridge's departure from the school in 1937. In the 1940s, Beveridge credited the Eugenics Society with promoting the children's allowance, which was incorporated into his 1942 report. However, whilst he held views in support of eugenics, he did not believe the report had any overall eugenic value. Professor Danny Dorling of the University of Sheffield says, There is not even the faintest hint of eugenic thought in the report. Dennis Sewell states that, On the day the House of Commons met to debate the Beveridge Report in 1943, its author slipped out of the gallery early in the evening to address a meeting of the Eugenics Society at the Mansion House. His report, he was keen to reassure them, was eugenic in intent and would prove so in effect. The idea of child allowances had been developed within the society with the twin aims of encouraging the educated professional classes to have more children than they currently did and, at the same time, to limit the number of children born to poor households. For both effects to be properly stimulated, the allowance needed to be graded, middle-class parents receiving more generous payments than working-class parents. The Home Secretary had that very day signalled that the government planned a flat rate of child allowance. But Beveridge, alluding to the problem of an overall declining birth rate, argued that even the flat rate would be eugenic. Nevertheless, he held out hope for the purists. Sir William made it clear that it was in his view not only possible but desirable that graded family allowance schemes, applicable to families in the higher income brackets, be administered concurrently with his flat rate scheme, reported the Eugenics Review. <laughs> Personal life Lord Beveridge married Jessie Janet, daughter of William Philip and widow of David Mayer, in 1942. He died at his home on 16 March 1963, aged 84, and was buried in Thockrington Churchyard, on the Northumbrian Moors. His barony became extinct upon his death. His last words, as he sat up in bed whilst still working on his History of Prices, were, I have a thousand things to do. Topic. Commemoration Beveridge Street in the Christchurch Central City was named for William Beveridge. It was one of 120 streets that were renamed in 1948 by Peter Fraser's Labour government of New Zealand. In November 2018, English Heritage unveiled a blue plaque commemorating Beveridge at 27 Bedford Gardens in Campton Hill, London W8, 7EF, where he lived from 1914 until 1921. Topic: <laughs> Works. Unemployment, A Problem of Industry, 1909, online .org. Prices and Wages in England from the 12th to the 19th Century, 1939. Social Insurance and Allied Services, 1942. The Beverage Report The Pillars of Security and Other Wartime Essays and Addresses, 1943, republished 2014. Full Employment in a Free Society, 1944. The Economics of Full Employment, 1944. Why I Am a Liberal, 1945. Power and Influence, 1953. 
India called them, George Allen and Onwin, 1947 Plan for Britain, a collection of essays prepared for the Fabian Society by G. D. H. Cole, Anurin Bevan, Jim Griffiths, L. F. Easterbrook, Sir William Beveridge, and Harold J. Losky not illustrated with 127 text pages. Topic see also Anurin Bevan, Clement Attlee's Health Minister Beveridge Curve, the relationship between unemployment and the job vacancy rate list of liberal theorists list of British university chancellors and vice-chancellors list of United Kingdom MPs with the shortest service list of vice-chancellors of the University of London Topic Resources Jose Harris, William Beveridge, A Biography, Oxford University Press, 1997. ISBN 0-19-820685-2. Julian de Maid, Prodwier un fait scientifique. Beverage et le Comité international de histoire des prix, Paris, Publications de la Sorbonne, 2018. ISBN 979-10-351-0058-2. William Beveridge's archives are held at the London School of Economics. Photographs of William Beveridge held by LSE Archives Donald Markwell, John Maynard Keynes and International Relations, Economic Paths to War and Peace, Oxford University Press, 2006. Topic references Topic Further reading Addison, Paul. The Road to 1945, British Politics and the Second World War 1977, pp 211-28. Harris, Jose. William Beveridge, A Biography 1997, online. Hills, John et al., eds. Beverage and Social Security, An International Retrospective 1994, Robertson, David Bryan. Policy Entrepreneurs and Policy Divergence, John R. Commons and William Beveridge, Social Service Review 62.3 504-531. Sugita, Waiwanyuki. The Beverage Report in Japan, Social Work in Public Health 29.2 148-161. Whiteside, Noel. The Beverage Report and its Implementation, A Revolutionary Project, Histoire et Politique 3 2014, 24-37, online topic Primary Sources Williams, Yoan, and Carol Williams, eds. A Beverage Reader 2014, Works of William H. Beverage. Topic external links Hansard 1803-2005, Contributions in Parliament by William Beveridge Sir William Beveridge Foundation Berkspeerage. Com Spartacus Educational on William Beveridge and the Beveridge Report Full text of the Beveridge Report BBC Information BBC Radio 4, Great Lives, downloadable 30-minute discussion of William Beveridge Catalogue of William Beveridge's Papers at the London School of Economics LSE Archives Cataloguing the Beveridge Papers at LSE Archives Newspaper clippings about William Beveridge in the 20th Century Press Archives of the German National Library of Economics ZBW.